morning, everybody. Um, my name's Jane Dickinson. I work for CompTIA, which um, you might say is a bit of an awkward acronym. It actually stands for the Computing Technology Industry Association. And what I do for them there is I look after their academy program in the UK and Ireland, which is a program that's been designed to help schools, colleges and universities deliver industry relevant education alongside national curricula. So, this is what we do. We are a not-for-profit global IT association, and as you might imagine, we advocate on behalf of industry. So we're made up of members, we're made up of IT businesses, um, and we advocate on um, issues of policy, promoting best practice. Um, we create a huge amount of resources, educational resources, and those are not just technical, but also their sales and marketing related, their business related. So for example, um, we've created a whole host of resources around IT businesses can transition from offering on-premise solutions to the cloud, et cetera, et cetera. The area of CompTIA I work in, um, as I alluded to before, is really in the workforce development space. You know, and as Rob's just been talking about, there's some really huge problems about attracting people into STEM, into IT, into cyber. Um, and that is a massive focus for us because if we're trying to advance the industry, how can we do that if we don't have the people with the skills that we need to move things on? So we engage in a number of programs to try and facilitate that. Um, on the gender issue, um, we have a program called Dream IT, which is all about trying to reach girls really quite early on in um, their school, school years and try to inspire them and encourage them to continue with their studies. Quite a lot drop off once they um, take, take their options at 14. Um, we're just investing some serious money in a program called Next Up. Um, reach, research has shown us that a single intervention is not really very helpful um, in helping us tackle the problem. Um, so much as it's great that an inspirational speaker might go into a school, we really need something a bit more um, coherent and, and multiple interventions really to, to have some impact and to have those people continuing and studying. So we'll see a lot more. Um, is that wobbling or is that me? I'm not sure. Um, so we'll see that coming in the next year or so. Um, about 25 years ago, the businesses that make up CompTIA came to us and said, we need a common benchmark to be able to um, assess the skills of the people who work for us and the people who work in our channel. Um, and that's when the A plus was born, which is a certification. I'm going to talk a bit about that later um, in terms of support for IT pros um, and about how that helps with that formal piece of learning, that 10% that Rob talked about earlier. Um, before I go any further, I'm really curious to know more about you. So how many students do we have in the room? Okay, so we've got a fair student population. IT pros? Okay, lots of you guys too. I, and then local businesses? Okay, great. Okay, that really helps me, thanks. Um, so what we're going to be talking about today, just going to have a very quick look at how we see the IT security landscape. I'm going to leave um, speakers like Robin and Samantha to talk about that in much more depth but just give you a view of what we're seeing. And then I'm going to really talk about resources that um, we have that are going to help um, and assist whether you're a student, whether you're a business, whether you're an IT pro. So yes, this will come as no surprise to you that um, you know, the attack surface is definitely increasing. Um, you know, the dissolution of the perimeter, that is absolutely what we're seeing. Um, we did a research study last year around trends in cyber and, you know, two-thirds of UK businesses, when they reflect back on the last two years and they look at the next two years coming, they are absolutely identifying that um, cybersecurity is becoming more and more important to them and that's probably no surprise to the people in this room, I suspect. And when we look at the reasons for that, um, they do vary from country to country. This was a 12 country study that we did, but it is the change in IT operations 
that in the main um, are contributing to that. So it is the move to, move to cloud, um, the increasing use of mobile. Um, but it's also about um, breach as well. So either those organisations have been breached themselves or increasingly they're he hearing um, of competitors or other organisations that have. Um, and I think we are rapidly moving, are we not, to a situation where in terms of the list of things that are certain in life, like death and taxes, um, security breaches probably are on that list. And I think I heard a director of HMGCC say very recently that, you know, the three things certain in his life, are, you know, death taxes and the fact that there's a for foreign government on your network. Um, that's very much the environment we're in and that rapidly evolving um, environment and you know UIT pros out there have got a really challenging job technology is moving really quickly um, you know and it's not just about the technology is it it's about the psychology um, and you have to be a thought leader in your business um, being proactive um, keeping a pace with the change and the evolution and also keeping your businesses focused on the right things so what do we have to support you? Well, on the membership side of the house at CompTIA, we moved to an open membership model about two years ago now. What that means is that you can register for free and avail yourself of many of the resources that we make available. So um, if you go to comptier.org, which is what this screenshot reflects, um, hit the bar Insight and Tools, you'll see that there's many topics there, but if you click on the security one, this is what you'll see. So you'll see our research, you'll see white papers. Um, let's see what we've got there. We've got a quick start to security compliance, to physical security, and then in some of the paid for content, that's the content with the um, star in the corner, building a modern security practice, um, CompTIA Executive Certificate in IT Security Business Development. There's an IT Security Toolkit. So there's a host of resources available, either as a registered user um, or as a paid member. And membership doesn't actually cost that much. Remember, we're a non-profit organisation and we want to make these resources and tools available to as many people as possible. For students in the room, you will be the best judge, but I suspect that some of these might be useful to you in terms of your project work as well, um, to kind of reference some of this information, some of these guides and toolkits that are available. Okay, so what else did our research show us? It showed us that the overwhelming majority of security breaches are down to human behavior, not the technology. Again, probably not a massive surprise to the, to the audience in this room. These are the reasons why. So it is things like increased uh, um, usage of social media, but it is around education as well. So just perhaps that lack of understanding about the risk um, or indeed, general negligence. And of course, at a time where the tools available to potential attackers have become ever more sophisticated, um, powerful, relatively cheap, um, and perhaps, you know, clearly the Daily Star's not doing a great job of telling us, Joe Public, that um, you know the, these attacks are happening and what those threats look like. We're in a situation where you know we do have a lot of um, risk and exposure um, from people trying to get in. You know, and they only need that one user to click on something while they're eating a sandwich and on the phone at the same time. And you know, if they're in, they could be lurking on the system for a very long time. So last year, in response to this research, we did create um, a 60-minute learning called Cyber Secure. So this is aimed at everybody in the organisation. Think things like health and safety training or diversity training, that kind of thing. Um, and what we really wanted to do was rather than kind of wag the finger and say, oh, you know, you were really stupid, weren't you, to click on that 
thing or to do this or that. We wanted to empower people and to educate people and to make them aware that security is everybody's responsibility, not just the responsibility of the security department or the, indeed the IT department. Um, so it's self-paced, 60 minutes long. We realised that we needed to make it pretty fun and interactive and it is you kind of work through a number of scenarios I think that one at the bottom there if I remember correctly you have to rate which one of those individuals in terms of what they're asking you to do and it's quite nuanced you have to rate um, you know which one is is the most risky and it really does promote thought and really makes you think about what it is you do day to day. And that was what really what we wanted to do was to help people become a bit more mindful online. Um, it's pretty cheap <laughs> because we want, well, we've created it, we want people to use it. So even at its most expensive, if I was to just go on to CyberSecure and buy it today as a single user, it would cost me $25. So it is out there. If you want to have a look at it, there is a demo at cybersecure.org, or if you would like to have a look at the whole thing, um, just drop me an email, let me know when you'd like to look at it, and I'll make it available to you. Um, it can be put on LMS systems. There is reporting associated with it, like all e-learning. You know, we all need to know whether people have um, started it, where they are with it, all of that kind of thing. So that's there for everybody to use. Okay, so what support do we have for IT pros. So as I mentioned previously, about 25 years ago, we started creating um, international standards, vendor neutral standards um, to support IT, IT pro, pros in their job roles. Um, we work with industry to create these. Um, so we go out to the industry and the first question we ask when we're refreshing one of our certifications is, what does that job role look like today. So, for example, back in the day with, with the A+, which is aligned to the job role of an entry-level IT technician, it was all about break fix. It's not about that anymore. Now it's all about um, you know, supporting multiple devices within networks. Um, and we are, when I say vendor neutral, that doesn't mean vendor absent. We include whatever the technologies and platforms that the typical IT pro is using in role today, they get included in. So maybe 10 years ago, if I take the example of the A plus again, that was pretty Microsoft centric, but now we've got Linux in there, we have Android, we have um, Apple, et cetera, et cetera. We have um, a roadmap which might be of interest to you, um, budding IT pros in the room or indeed current IT pros. And really what this aims to do is to look at the different technology areas so you can see information security there at the top and to give you some idea of the professional certifications that might help you enrol dependent on what level you're at. And because we're a neutral organisation, yes, it does have our certifications on there, but it also has everybody else's as well. So that's quite a useful um, piece to, to look at. You can get that on our website. And this is how we look at what we're doing in this space in terms of supporting um, IT pros and the workforce development pieces. We, we look at what the modern IT department looks like and we build the standards around the job roles. So you can see that really we have coverage across most of the key um, infrastructure topics. And perhaps not surprisingly, um, security is a pretty big uh, percentage of ev in everything that we do. And again, coming back to that point that, you know, security is everybody's job, but of course, the amount of security that um, an IT technician needs versus a cyber analyst is, is different. So it's thinking about, well, what's required according to job role, according to level, and building that accordingly. So one of the things that we're doing this year is we're starting to build um, a cyber security pathway. So, um, you know, cyber 
is increasingly front and centre. We know that as our world becomes ever more interconnected, we need to do more to support this area than perhaps others like the game development that that um, Rob talked about. We need to attract more people into this industry and we need to give them the toolkit and the skills to be able to be successful. So um, Security Plus has been around for a little while. So that's commonly used in apprenticeship programs. Um, university students are doing it alongside their undergraduate degrees. We've been doing some work with the Cybersecurity Challenge, making Security Plus available to those undergraduates on those camps, and we're seeing some really good results from that. Um, it's also being taught in, so, in some cases in, in colleges as well, and it's really building on a basic infrastructure knowledge and concentrating on those foundational security principles across things like threats and vulnerabilities, um, network security, those kind of things. But then we saw this. This is incredible to me. So as, as of 2016, the number one fastest growing job in the history of the Bureau of Labor Statistics, this is American data, ever is the information security analyst. Now, I don't know how long Bureau of Labor Statistics have been going, but that's a pretty incredible growth rate. So this is kind of what we start, have started to see, just that incredible hike over the last two years. And speaking to industry, that's led us um, to create this. This is the Cybersecurity Analyst Plus, which releases next Thursday, February 16th. Um, this is the next level on, and it's really all about, well, how do you apply behavioral analytics um, now that, you know, the threats are changing and, and evolving? It's not just about the technology anymore, of course. So this comes out next week. I think in the history of our certifications, it usually takes a little while for them to be adopted, and mainly that's because... I think we, we do have a tendency to be a bit prescient in that we're looking at kind of what's coming in the next two years rather than what's here now. But this, we've already got people queuing up to, to um, sit on courses to learn this stuff, which is incredibly encouraging um, and it's, it's highly exciting. So, you know, that's coming. And again, um, more information online if you want to take a look at that. And in terms of support for people that have been enrolled for longer, um, so we're talking kind of five to ten years here. Um, we also have our first ever mastery certification, which is the CompTIA Advanced Security Practitioner. Um, kind of think CISSP in, term of, in terms of level, um, but this is really kind of the hands-on, practical, performance-led um, counterpart to CISSP. So that's available to you. So that's the um, security pathway. In terms of the data that we're seeing and the value of these, then you know, it is an incredibly positive picture. Individuals are telling us that they really are helping them in getting their first job. Um, hiring managers certainly are very, very um, well disposed to them. Um, but this is the data I really like. So, you know, I know that back in the day when I used to work with Microsoft, certainly amongst some companies, there seemed to be the feeling that, you know, if they put them through their MCSE and they invested in their staff, they would just walk out of the door. Well, that might happen. Um, and I know that probably the counter to that is, but if you don't invest in your staff, what happens if they stay, right? Um, but this is fantastic in that actually... Um, statistically, 89% of certified individuals are more likely to stay with their employer. Um, they perform better, they're more likely to get a rise, more likely to be promoted. Um, but I think this is what's interesting too, is that the confidence levels soar, um, and the confidence to do their job and to become that thought leader is impacted and there's a lasting effect there as well so um, if we look at after 10 years of security experience people who actually hold a security plus are likely to have 20 percent more core knowledge than the people who don't which is really interesting 
So, um, for students in the room, um, we have just launched a new marketplace, um, which gives you deep discounts on um, certifications and training. So if you want to do this alongside your degree to further enhance your employability, there's some great assistance there for you. Um, this is a quote from Anton. Anton is um, a Swedish national who um, is, has recently finished a degree course in Scotland. And I met him as part of the Cybersecurity Challenge um, university camps where we were offering the, the um, campers the opportunity to do a Security Plus as part of their camp. Um, and I received this email from him, which was great. So um, he has contingent on him passing that certification. He has um, received uh, a job offer from an uh, information security company across Sweden and the Netherlands. So um, that's the kind of impact um, that it can have alongside, you know, an excellent degree from a great uni like uh, Plymouth. So in summary, Here's some of the resources that are available to you. Um, most of these absolutely free of charge. I'm betting that this deck is going to be made available to you. So this is why I've done this to make this really, really easy for you to access. Um, and then, of course, we do have a whole host of other resources as well um, as part of membership. Now, this is a really long action list, and I'm going to appear really quite bossy, I think, at this point. But I think my call to action is to everybody, um, sign up. As a registered user, it's absolutely free, and you know there's lots of great resources available to you um, on the security topic, but also on other IT areas as well. Um, have a look at CyberSecure. If it's of interest to you and you'd like to use it within your organization to help people become more security aware, just let me know. I'll be happy to help you with that. Um, we acquired an association of IT professionals um, at the end of last year. So we will be launching um, a benefits membership for individuals um, later on this year. Um, not quite sure what that's going to look like yet, but that's going to sit alongside all of the resources and benefits that are available to businesses. Um, so if you are interested in hearing more about that as that unfolds, please do email me. And as soon as I have further details, you will be the first to know. Um, students, if you are interested in doing an industry certification alongside your degree, please do talk to me today. I'd be happy to kind of point you in the direction and give you some support on that. And remember, you are in the fantastic position that whilst you are a student, um, you'll get it at an incredible price as well. Um, if you're an IT business in the room, then we do have a UK channel community. Um, so you feel free to work, to um, join that. Lots of great networking opportunities for you um, to grow your business. There's a LinkedIn group associated with that. And then also, of course, if you're interested in becoming um, a member, then there, there's lots of um, benefits available to you there too. Thank you.